various uh, bodies, advisory committees. Currently, he is uh, Dean Faculty of IELTS at uh, IIT Guwahati, and he is also a member board of governor at IIT Guwahati. Uh, he is a fellow of Indian Academy of Sciences, fellow of National Academy of Sciences, fellow of Royal Society of Chemistry, and he was also awarded with the CRSI Bronze Medal for his outstanding research in chemistry. Uh, he is currently a member of uh, advisory board of uh, SIN Open. Uh, Professor uh, Puniyamurthy's uh, research areas mainly focuses on development of uh, new reagents and methods uh, with uh, emphasis on asymmetric catalysis. So he also works on uh, understanding the mechanism of uh, stereoselective synthesis, so metal-based uh, reactivity and uh, so on. Uh, he has published a large number of uh, uh, papers in international reputed journals and he is a well-known organic chemist in India and also in abroad. So it's a great pressure that he adorns a Professor Acharya Rai's lecture series as a speaker. So we are really uh, grateful for him to give an opportunity to present his uh, uh, research talk at IIT Indoor. So with this, I uh, like to welcome Professor Puniyamurthy uh, to begin his uh, talk for today. So thank you very much, uh, Venkatesh. So very happy to see you all. And also, I would like to thank you all for uh, giving me the opportunity to uh, speak in this uh, lecture series. Can I? Uh, Are you able to see the slide? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, yeah. So you can do slideshow. Yeah. Yeah. So very good. Very good afternoon to all of you. So in this uh, lecture, we will look at about some of our studies on regioselective CH functionalization application to heterocycle synthesis. As all of us know very well. CH functionalization is a fundamental and important transformation we use frequently to construct fine chemicals, materials, drugs, and natural products. The advantages include atom economy. You can reduce the E factor of the process. You can also have broad substrate scope. However, the challenges include the development of the FIT catalyst system because, as you know, the large bond to energy of CH bond requires very active catalyst. As you know, the pK of CH bond is more than 32. 35, that means very less acidic. This is a problem. This, uh, however, otherwise, it's a very useful transformation to construct diverse molecules, as shown here. The transmetal catalyzed CH functionalization can be broadly divided into three types. You can Metal oxo insertion into CH bond is well known, as all of us know very well. Metal carbonide nitronide insertion to CH bond, this also has been well explored. Direct insertion of metal into CH bond. This is the less explored comparing all these three types of reactions. When you look at the metal insertion into CH bond, we can further divide into two types, non-directed and direct group assisted CH functionalization or carbon metal bond formation. When we look at the literature, the last 60 years from 1960 onwards, as you can see in the graph. So after 1990, you can see here, 
considerable attention has been focused in this area. The number of publications have gone around 400 from 90 to 2000. After 2000, you can see here, the number is gone up to more than 1200 publications per year. When you look at the directing group assisted CH functionalization, and the directing group makes chelation with your metal, activate the CH bond through cyclometallation, it can be five or six membered cyclic transition state. In this way, you are able to make the carbon metal bond. Once you make the carbon metal bond, you can try to introduce a functional group. The functional group can be permanent or it can be removable and both are widely utilized for the directed CH functionalization. Here the challenge is we have to develop an effective directing group. It, it means the directing group should not make strong chelation, then it will be metal complex. It will stop there. It should be weak chelating group, such a way that you can make chelation, activate the CH bond through cyclometallation. You make a carbon metal bond. What you do here, you break the bond between the directing group or the metal. Now you, you have your carbon metal bond. So you have to have a appropriate directing group so that we will be able to make the carbon metal bond. Once if we have this one, you can try to introduce a functional group. When we look at the literature, in 1963, the activation of CH activation of this RL system has been shown. Here the nitrogen makes chelation with this cyclopendadine nickel complex at high temperature. Then activate the CH bond to form the nickel complex. This is the first report up here, 1963, where you can see here the activation of CH bond takes place by directing group. Here the nitrogen acts as a directing group. The lone pair first make chelation and the activation of ortho CH bond takes place. In this way, you can see the formation of the five member metallocycle. 1965, the activation of naphthalene beta CH bond has been shown using the ruthenium complex, phosphine complex. You can see here. If you look at this one, this is R1 metallic complexes. This is stoichiometric. However, this is the beginning of CH activation using the directing group. In 1989, the catalytic version of this reaction has been shown. If you look at this reaction, here, 2 methylpyridine has been coupled with this propene using the syngonium complex, the presence of hydrogen, dichloromethane solvent to give this isopropyl methylpyridine as a product. The CC form formation takes place at the ortho this position. We look at the reaction pathway. This is your syngonium complex, which first reacts with the hydrogen. And the hydrogenation takes place. You break the syngonium carbon bond by hydrogenation. You form the syngonium hydride bond complex. And this reacts with the substrate, 2-methylpyridine. The products comes out. You form this intermediate. Then the activation of this CH bond takes place. And you are able to form this intermediate where you remove the hydrogen molecule. Once if we have this one, this further reacts by insertion of this propene to give this, regenerate the syngonium complex. Later, the reaction of astrophenone has been shown with alkene is a ruthenium complex. This reaction has been carried out again at a high temperature. If you look at the reaction, this Carbonyl oxygen makes acts as a directing group, makes chelation with the ruthenium, activate the ortho CH bond. The addition reaction between, the, between this, this carbon and uh, this carbon carbon double bond takes place. And you have the ruthenium here. When you have hydrogenation done in this way, what happens here? The alkylation takes place at the ortho position. We form a carbon carbon bond. This is a breakthrough. This, after this study, in particular, after this, Considerable effort has been made around the world 
and the directing group assisted CH functionalization. Considerable progress has been made using palladium, ruthenium, rhodium based catalyst systems. Subsequently, attention also has been paid to use copper cobalt based catalyst systems. You can see nowadays so many papers are coming out. We have been working in this area for the past 11 to 12 years. In this talk, I would like to show you the directed CH functionalization, in particular heterocyclic compounds. Then the second part of my talk will focus on the strained ring chemistry. Here, what we will see as all of you know, three membered cyclic compounds are four membered, they are strain molecule. It's well known in the literature. You can open up this reactive cyclic systems using nucleophile. It's a, it has been well explored. What we are going to see here is that the opening of the strain ring molecules by nucleophile, the whatever product we are going to end up, that can be further converted into cyclic compounds by CH functionalization. Basically, we will it will involve two type of reactions. At the end, we will see the use of more sustainable approach for this transformation. That means use of photoredox catalysis. Here, as all of you know, indole is very important heterocyclic compound. It is present in several natural products and biologically active compounds. But if you look at, there are several compounds have indole as a core unit or part of the molecule, which show very interesting biological and medicinal properties. If you look at the marketed drugs, and 24 molecules have indole as a structural scaffold. Therefore, effort has been made to functionalize indoles. When you look at the indole, there are two types of CH bonds are there. One is the five-membered pyrrole part. You have C2, C3, and the benzenoid part, you have C4, C7, and C5, C6. And as all of us know, these two are very reactive comparing to this. And CH functionalization of this C2, C3 have been well explored, considerably explored, not well explored considerably explored during this 2000 after the discovery of uh, this Murais ruthenium catalyzed ortho CHA activation of um, astrophenone derivatives. Presently, effort has been made to functionalize C7 and C4, but comparing this and C5 and C6, uh, they are very less explored. So now let us show some of our results on the C7 functionalization. Why we should do, look at for the, these molecules. If you look at this molecule, you can see here, this is the indole. The seventh position, you have the RL substituent. So if you can develop a relation at the seventh position, it will be useful. With this, we have started the relation of uh, indole with boronic acid using cobalt based catalyst. Why indolene? You have to reduce the double bond so that the C2 position is less reactive comparing to C7 position. You don't reduce, as you know, this pyrimidyl directing group can make chelation and activate the C2CH bond if it's indole through five membered metal cycle. To avoid that, what we have done. We have reduced the double bond here, convert to indoline. Once we have indoline, now you can, the metal catalyst can make chelation here, activate this CH bond through six members metallation. So you can try to introduce a rail group. That is the reason we have introduced, we have used indoline as the substrate. This can be reacted with boronic acid using cobalt phosphine complex. It works very well. 
after the reaction what you can do you can try to remove the primidyl directing group using base hydrolysis and you can also oxidize this indoline using ddq2 indoline indole so in this way you will be able to get the 7 or indole as the product this reaction has broad substrate scope scalable we also have carried out detailed mechanistic investigation when you go for the reaction pathway the cobalt acac complex reacts the phosphine cyclohexyl phosphine 1 then you form the phosphine complex this undergoes oxidation to cobalt 3 intermediate complex by electron transfer process the reaction also uses manganese to acetate the manganese to acetate can be oxidized to manganese 3 acetate by oxygen that can be reduced to manganese 2 by electron transfer process where you generate cobalt 3 phosphine complex that can make chelation and activation of the ch bond through cmd process considered metallation deprotonation you will be able to generate this metallocycle once we have this one this can react with the aryl radical that is well known in the literature can be generated from the boronic acid using manganese 3 species this aryl radical can make chelation with the cobalt to give the cobalt 4 intermediate this can give the product by reductive elimination to complete the catalyst cycle you generate the cobalt 2 then so it can carry out the other catalyst cycle so as you can see here and this is readily available and this also you can easy to make you can make the cobalt acetylacetate complex and manganese 2 acetate also commercially available you use air as oxidant and so using this all the readily available catalyst or oxidizing agent you will be able to generate or you will be able to introduce the aryl system at the benzenoid c7 position and then you can try to you can also try to remove this primitive directing group as i just mentioned using sodium hydroxide then you can oxidize and the indole into indole using ddq to have seven aryl indole as the product having success in this transformation the student further went to carry out the acyl oxidation reaction of indoline is the same substrate it is well known in the literature acyl oxidation reaction here the advantage is that you can use all kinds of carboxylic acids that are alkyl or aryl alpha beta unsaturated as well as heterocyclic carboxylic acids you see the ruthenium complex as a catalyst and here the limitation is that although we can try to couple the carboxylic acid we are not able to remove the directing group because when you do the hydrolysis here this also undergoes hydrolysis that is the limitation otherwise you can try to oxidize this to indole and however you can try to react with variety of carboxylic acids when you go for the reaction pathway of this reaction in this the commercial available parasimine ruthenium 2 chloride reacts with the carboxylic acid the prism of silver salt to form the ruthenium carboxylate cationic complex this is a reversible reaction you can look at the paper and then makes chelation activation of the ch chelation then activation of the ch bond can generate the ruthenium carboxylate which can give the product by reduct elimination and the ruthenium zero can be oxidized to ruthenium carboxylate since you have the carboxylic acid to complete the catalyst cycle. So these are the two examples on the C7 functionalization of indolines. In parallel, the other student was doing amidation. This also indoline, the same directing group, using the same catalyst why it is important as if you look at the literature the tosyl acid has been well explored not alkyl acids as all of you know very well when you heat 
As alkyl acid can undergo rearrangement, that is rearrangement to give this, this as a product. This is a problem in this uh, reaction. Therefore, widely the tocyl acid has been explored. Here, the catalyst is quite efficient. You can no need heating, you can carry out the reaction at room temperature. Therefore, the rearrangement doesn't take place. You don't form the isocyanate. The cutaneous rearrangement doesn't take place. So, using this reaction conditions, you can carry out the amidation. Here, you form the CN bond. No cutaneous rearrangement takes place. This is advantage of the transformation. Otherwise, you can have a broad substrate scope and you can make variety of indoline, even carbosol. You can do the amidations at the this position to give this amide as a product. On the other hand, if you use, as I just mentioned, indole as the product, the direct group is same here. Here, indoline we use. So, then the amidation takes place here. On the other hand, we use indole as just we have discussed, the amidation takes place in two position. This reaction has been carried out using the cobalt cyclopentadienyl uh, complex. And this is, otherwise you can have a very good substrate scope here and you can use a cobalt based catalyst system. That's only difference. And you can, when you go for the reaction pathway, this you can make easily. And this can, as earlier we have seen, uh, reacts with this sodium acetate and this uh, salt to form this cation uh, cobalt complex, carboxylate complex, then it, re it makes chelation, activation of the CH bond. This also reversible reaction. If you look at the paper, you can find out and you form the metallocycle, then reacts with this acide, alkyl acide, then removal of nitrogen insertion, nitrogen insertion here leads to the formation of this intermediate. This, since you generate the acetic acid as a byproduct, uh, proto decobaltation can uh, regenerate the catalyst and we will produce the product. In this way, you can try to do the amidation at the C2 position using the two pyrimidyl as the directing group. So far, we have seen some examples for the C7 and C2 functionalization. If we look at all the four examples, we use nitrogen based chelating group. In all the cases, we have used two pyrimidyl as the directing group. Now, let me show you some examples at C4 functionalization where we use oxygen as a chelating group, more weak, I mean weak chelating group. When you go before going to the results, when you look at the C4 functionalization of indole, and there is a two possibilities there. This chelating group can also activate. You can make chelation through metal, activate the C2CH bond through five-membered metallocycle. It's more favored. On the other hand, you can also activate the C4CH bond. However, it involves six-membered metal cycle. If you compare six-membered, five-membered is favored. So when you look at the theoretical calculation, this is a simple indole, N-methyl indole you have here, N-alkyl indole. If you look at the electron density in this system, the C2 and C4 have almost the same electron density. On the other hand, as soon as we introduce here carbonyl group, the electron density at the C2 position is reduced compared to C4. Therefore, if you have the carbonyl group as a directing group, you can, although the six-membered metallocycle is involved, we can try to facilitate the activation of the C4CH bond compared to C2CH bond so that you can make a carbon metal bond here. So then you can introduce a functional group. So why C4? As all of you know very well, you can list, there are so many natural alkaloids have, you can see here, uh, C4 functionalization. Now you have here substance C3 and C4. And if you have the, do the C4 functionalization, you can try to make these alkaloids. Let us look at these two alkaloids. 
these two compounds have been made from the four allyl indole. Okay. So, this if you look at this one and in a multi step synthesis, and this is crucial, you have to make a four allyl indole. Once we have this one, you can try to carry out the standard using the standard reactions to make this alkaloid. So, let me show you some of our uh, results on C4 functionalization. Here, you can look at here, this N product N alkyl indole. And can be here, you have the, in the C4 position, C3 position, we have the carb, uh, carbonyl group. So, once if we have this one, you can try to react with this Morita Pelis Hillman adduct using rhodium catalysis and you can try to introduce the uh, C4 allylation here. So, nicely you can make and you do not need any oxidant. The advantage is you can try to easily remove this one. Selectively, you can do the C4 allylation. So, this you can look at the paper and let me show you the mechanism in the next slide. And you can also vary the substrate scope. In place of the Morita Bailey Silman adduct, you can also try to use allylic alcohol as a substrate. And what you can do here, in this way you can make the alkylation as well as alkylation by the controlling the reaction conditions. And depends upon the reaction conditions here, when we use silver carbonate or is alkyl, you can make the carbon carbon bond to get the alpha beta unsaturated substituent here. On the other hand, if you have here only or is methyl group, use sodium pivolate as the additive or tertiary butyl here, pivolic, pivolate as a directing group, silver carbonate as an oxidant, then we can end up with this alkylated compound as a product. So, by controlling the reactions, Either you can get this or that from the same starting material. Let me show the mechanism for the allylation transformation. So, the rhodium complex is a reversible reaction here, makes chelation with our carbonyl group, activation of the C4CH bond takes place, here R is methyl group. So, you have this intermediate. Once if you have this one, it can make chelation with a double bond as shown here. Migratory insertion can lead to the formation of this rhodium species. Then this can now lead to the beta state elimination to give this allyl derivative as the product. And you regenerate your rhodium 3. You start with the rhodium 3, you have here rhodium 3, and it can further react with your whatever you have the salt reaction medium to regenerate the active complex, then it can further undergo a reaction. So, this is very, very important substrate precursor for variety of useful compounds. For example, you can remove the acetyl group using the paratolumine sulfonic acid under heating. This can be further reacted with this thiol by addition reaction as you can see here, this is a very biologically important compound. Similarly, you can also try to react oxidative addition, variety of reaction, you can do it here. You can use as a substrate precursor to construct variety of indole based derivatives. So, just we have seen the annihilation, alkylation and alkylation of indole at C4 position. Let me show you the another example, arylation. This also can be accomplished using the weak rating group. And here we use benzoyl as a directing group. The previous one, the two examples use acetyl as a directing group. And comparing to acetyl here, benzoyl is uh, effective. This depends upon because as you, you can see here, this also catalyst is different. Earlier we have seen the use of rhodium based catalyst, here palladium. This combination works very well. And you can see here you have to use a mixture of palladium acetate 
and trifluoromethane sulfonic acid in the presence of K2S2O8 at moderate temperature, you can try to couple arene directly by, by a cross dehydrogenated coupling. In this way, you'll be able to introduce the aryl at C4 position. Some of the examples are shown here. You can see here, and here using as a benzoyl as a directing group. Here, the ketone was the directing group. This also works. And, and mostly you get, depends upon the what kind of arene you use it here. When you use toluene, a mixture of compounds has been observed, and uh, the, the reaction takes place at the pair opposition as well as the meta opposition. You can see here the ratio is 2 is to 1. However, and as you can see here, arene is readily available. You have to use a solvent as well as a reactant, the excess. If you look at the paper, you can find it out. And you can, uh, in this way, by a, you can introduce aryl group here by a cross CDC uh, process to have the four aryl in dollars of product. When you go for the reaction pathway, as I just mentioned, the palladium acetate in the presence of trifluoromethane and sulfonic acid gives the best result. However, when you use this uh, commercially available less reactive, and you can look at the paper for the explanation, but this active complex which we generate C2 is more effective. This can make chelation with our Carbonyl group as shown here, the activation of this CH bond at four position takes place. You form the palladium species here. Once we have the metallocycle, this can make reaction with your arene as shown here. Then you make a this palladium intermediate, palladium two intermediate. This can give the product by reductive elimination. We generate here palladium zero that can be oxidized to palladium two um, TF2. And since you have carry out the reaction, the presence of trifluoromethane sulfonic acid to regenerate the catalyst. The advantage of this reaction, you use arena as a arylating agent. In addition to that, the reaction also scalable. Once we have this, this uh, product, you can try to do further functionalization. For example, you can do the HEP type of reaction, addition reaction at C, C2 position. In this way, you'll be able to get this compound. You can also try to do oxidative coupling between this, and you can get this compound. You can also try to remove the directing group as just we have seen using the same toluene sulfonic acid, and this carbonyl group can go, and you can get the 4 aryl in as a product. So you can use as a substrate precursor, intermediate, for a variety of other transformations. So far, we have seen three examples for the C4 CC form formation using rhodium and palladium based catalyst systems. Now, let us move to the second part of my talk, where we will see, as I just mentioned, the coupling of stained rings with the substrates where the substrate have a nucleophilic center as well as the CH bond. For example, when you have the substrate, you have the nucleophile. This also has CH bond. It can be sp3 or sp2. SP so when you react to this kind of substrate with the strained molecule, we are going to look at the reactivity of three-membered cyclic compounds. The nucleophile can react here, open up. You have the intermediate. That intermediate can be further cyclized by a CH activation. It can be sp3 or sp2. This way, you'll be able to generate variety of medicinally important six membered and five membered heterocyclic compounds with a broad functional group diversity. And here, two types of reactions involved. First one is what happens? Nucleophilic ring opening. The second one, oxidative cyclization. So both reactions are well known. CH function is well known, ring opening well known. Coupling these two are rare. So therefore, you have to choose a catalyst. It can does, it can do both ring opening as well as oxidative cyclization. This is the challenging in this transformation. So if you can develop a catalyst, 
if you can choose a catalyst, find a catalyst, can do both steps, then we can try to carry out both reactions in one part that can lead to the compounds. So therefore, the catalyst should have Lewis acidity because it has to activate the molecule, three-membered cyclic compound. So you have to further activate so that the nucleophile can readily attack. The redox then oxidative cyclization, then you have to, the catalyst, the Lewis acid also should act as a redox catalyst so that you can try to cyclize in one part. So before going to the results, let me show you some of the background of this uh, chemistry. The beginning of 2010 or 2009, when we were carried out the reaction of hydrozone with the copper to triflate to form this heterosalic compound, we found that the copper triflate makes chelation with a nitrogen lone pair here. This can be X can be oxygen or nitrogen. The lone pair of this carbon nitrogen double bond, this lone pair of this nitrogen makes chelation with the copper to triflate to form this intermediate. Once we have this one, it's activated. Now, what happens here, the driving force here, this triflate ion comes out, pick up this proton, deprotonation, facilitate the formation of the nitrile intermediate. The nitrile is now bonded with this copper and the break of the nitrogen, this nitrogen or oxygen bond takes place and you will, the formation of this kind of intermediate occurs. Now, the aromatization takes place when this undergoes addition, the X can undergoes addition here because already the nitrogen is chelated with this copper to give this metallocycle, six-membered metallocycle, this copper to intermediate. Now, what happens here? Two molecules of trivialic acid comes out. We have this metallocycle. Now, this is oxidized to copper 3 by redox process where the copper 2 deflate is reduced to copper 1. And once if we have this copper to copper 3 deflate intermediate, this undergoes reductive elimination to give this heterosalic compound. As you can see here, the copper triflate here does two roles. First, act as a Lewis acid the formation of this. Then it acts as a redox catalyst to form this step that can lead to the reductive elimination. So we thought that, so if you look at here, this ionic pathway. So another example, what we found, copper to acetate does similar kind of role in the case of hydrozone. For example, when you take this diesel hydrozone, where the copper to acetate is reduced to copper 1 by single electron transfer process, where the formation of this cation radical takes place. So this undergoes isomerization. You have the X means acetate ion. It removes the proton here and form the benzyl radical. This undergoes dimerization, isomerization to give this derivative. This also further reduces the copper 1 to copper 0 by single electron transfer process. In this way, the formation of cation radical takes place. This now cleavage of this, homolytic cleavage of this can lead to the, now the acetate ion can deprotonate, then cyclization can lead to the formation of this radical where you generate acetic acid. Now you have the radical intermediate. Now, homolytic cleavage of this nitrogen nitrogen bond can generate one radical here. Then you lead the formation of this triazole as a neutral molecule. And you have here nitrogen radical. This radical can undergo coupling, dimerization, oxidation to give this azo derivative. And this copper zero, acetic acid, you have two molecules of acetic acid. You carry out the reaction under air, can undergo oxidation to give the copper to state and where you generate water as a product. From this, what we can understand here, the copper does two role. Here also, 
you can see it acts as a redox catalyst by electron transfer process. So the reaction can be ionic or radical depends upon the substrate and reaction conditions. Having this information, we thought that why don't you use copper based catalyst to carry out this 12 catalysis. Before going to that, let me show you the background of the first transformation. Tetrahydrophridazines. The structure is shown here. You look at here. And this is present in several medicinal important molecules and drugs. If you look at this review, they use several steps, reagents to construct this scaffold. It's not that easy, it looks simple, but it's not that easy. So we thought that bisal hydrazone easy to make. We have the carbonyl compound, hydrazine, you can easily make. Now you need three carbon synthon. So if you have the cyclopropane, for example, can we couple this three plus three cycle addition so that one part will be able to generate this tetrahydropyridazine? This is what we thought. As already we know that copper triflate can be used as Lewis acid redox catalyst. So with this, instead of simply this one, we added here the cyclopropane to donor acceptor cyclopropane. This is very reactive, easy to handle. As suspected. The reaction works very well. So you can see the reaction conditions here. When you take the bisal hydrozone and the donor acceptor cyclopropane and the presence of 10 mole per the copper triflate, dichloromethane at moderate temperature, we can try to make this tetrahydropyridazine. What you do here, you form both the nitrogen carbon, carbon, carbon bond in one part and as a concentrated way, you can first form the opening product, then it undergoes uh, cyclization. And in this way, you will be able to form these compounds. And if you use the chiral one, and you can preserve the enhanced selectivity, you can see here, in other words, the reaction is stereospecific. You can see here, and you can get more than 92% enantiomeric purity here in this, and opening takes place. That means it goes via SN2 process. And once you open up, then you have, don't have a problem, just you have to do cyclization. The opening is very crucial here. And as from this result looks, it goes via mostly SN2, maybe a little bit of SN1. That is the reason it's reduced here. That it depends upon here. You have here the substituent, it changes the electrophilicity of uh, this carbon. We have the electron withdrawing group most be more weakening and then it goes via partially SCN1 that is the reason here and you reduce the non selectivity here otherwise it's good once if you have 89 90 percent you can try to recrystallize further functionalize to improve the non selectivity and also very excess of the product so the reaction pathway is shown here and uh, so chelation of the copper to triplate with this ester group can activate this carbon carbon bond then now this nitrogen can readily open this one and you form this intermediate now once if you open this one now this can oxidize as just you have seen by uh, oxidize where the copper 2 is reduced to copper 1 then where you generate this intermediate this can undergo now addition reaction with this carbon tool bond nitrogen to give this cyclic compound. And what you do here, you generate the copper triplate and uh, triplic acid, and then you have the oxygen, it can be further oxidized to copper to triplate to complete the catalyst cycle. What basically happens here, first acts as a Lewis acid, then redox catalyst, coupling this, we will be able to generate this compound in one part with a high yield, and so you can see here, stereo specifically, you can make this compound. Having these results, and the, the other student changed the substrate, this side is same, and he used the N-alkyl aniline as a substrate, and here, so as I just mentioned, and when you vary the substrate, you have to change the reaction conditions also. The previous one was successful. The 
at moderate temperature, dichloromethane, you did not need anything. So just oxygen is sufficient, the reaction took place. Whereas here, you have to carry out the reaction with the pressure base, and you need one equivalent of potassium carbonate and at high temperature. Here, what happens? This opening takes place with the copper to triplate at room temperature, it stops. Therefore, after opening takes place, then you have to add the potassium carbonate at heat at 100 degrees Celsius, then the oxidative cyclization takes place. Here, R is you can see here benzyl CH bond. However, the reaction usually takes place not here, the benzyl CH bond and takes place the sp2 ch bond the aryl ring and in this way you will be able to make tetrahydroquinoline as a product once again you can see here the reaction also stereo specific and you can construct this both this nitrogen carbon and carbon carbon bond with the high enantiomeric purity you can see here so when you go for the application this is also very important molecule and uh, so we can use for intermediate to construct variety of medicinal important compounds. The examples are shown here and this can be converted to this. And again, you have this one, this can be easily converted to this compound. And you can see here, this molecule has the RL substituent. You can, in this way, you can use the corresponding donor acceptor cyclopropane. One way you can open and cyclize, you can make this compound. <coughs> So when you go for the reaction pathway, the previous case I mentioned, it was going through ionic pathway, but let us look at here, as just we have seen, opening of this donor acceptor cyclopropane can take place, you see copper to triflate as Lewis acid to give this compound. Once if we have this one, this happens at room temperature, then you have to add potassium carbonate here. And once you add, you can deprotonation takes place, now, now single electron transfer process. Now, the copper to triplet can be reduced to copper one, and this can be oxidized to copper uh, one radical. This radical now can undergo addition with the aryl ring. You form this radical intermediate. Now, this radical intermediate can be further converted to cation intermediate by oxidation process, where the copper to triplet is reduced to copper one triflate by a single electron transfer process. Once if you have this one, this can convert into this uh, bicyclic compound, aromatic ring by removal of proton. And here this, when we carried out in the presence of radical scavenger, we were able to uh, see the slow of the reaction as well as the yield, which clearly shows that the reaction goes via radical intermediate. Therefore, as, as just mentioned, and so it depends upon the substrate and reaction conditions, and it can go via ionic as well as radical pathway. However, as you can see here, the reaction involves both Lewis acid based as well as redox catalysis to accomplish this transformation. Both can be carried out in one part. Just we have seen two examples for the use of cyclopropanation based um, strain rings for the nuclear opening followed by the uh, CH functionalization reaction. Now let me show you the use of other cyclic compounds, cyclo, uh, this epoxide. This also can be reacted. For example, um, this our group found is easy to make uh, n alkylamine and uh, aniline. This can be coupled with this epoxide using cobalt-based catalyst, in the presence of tertiary butyl hydroperoxide uh, to give these five member retrocyclic compounds, oxysolid. This is also very important. Um, it is present in several compounds, uh, natural product, and biologically active compounds. Once if you have this one, you can carry out the particular transformation to get uh, the desired molecule. And you can see here if you use the chiral one, again, you can um, make these compounds with a high optical purity here. You can see here. And you can also use this kind of amine, in this way you'll be able to make this fused oxysolin as a product. When you go for the reaction pathway, this amine, the cobalt makes chelation, the lone pair of this oxygen can make chelation with your cobalt. Now the epoxy is activated. Now the lone pair of this amine can open up here 
and it comes out via ascent to pathway. The combination is very important. The combination is good, you will lose the E anode selectivity because the reaction goes via SN1 pathway. There is a lot of confusion many times the referees ask and the, we, you have to use proper Lewis acid so that simply weaken the nucleophile attacks. The reaction cannot be made generally specific. Only certain kind of epoxide, certain kind of amine can react, not all. They have the limitations. So, so now you can open up and you form the amino alcohol. Once if you have the amino alcohol, you can see uh, completely convert to this. Then you add your tertiary butyl peroxy, not the beginning. Once you have the opening product, the flask, then you add the tertiary butyl peroxide. You have to carry out the reaction very carefully. Now, the tertiary butyl peroxide can oxidize cobalt 2 to cobalt 3. And the cobalt 3 can be reduced to cobalt 2 by single electron transfer process from the nitrogen lone pair. What you do here is generate the cation radical intermediate. Now, once if you have this one, the tertiary peroxide radical can react with this carbon hydrogen bond. So, it can form the cleavage of this carbon, homolytic cleavage of the carbon hydrogen bond can generate the CH2 radical. This radical and this radical can combine here. In this way, you will be able to form the imenium ion. Once you have the imenium ion, then it can undergo addition reaction to give the product. And here, um, you generate the tertiary butanolized product. Again, and you can see a benzyl-CH CH bond. You may think that the benzyl CH bond is more reactive comparing to this, uh, as you know, and this comparing to the methyl CH bond. However, why the reaction takes place here? This is because most probably due to the steric hindrance of that, because you use the bulkier tetrabrox radical due to steric hindrance, maybe it reacts the less reactive methyl CH bond comparing to the more reactive um, the benzyl CH bond. To form the imenium ion, so once you form the imenium ion, then it can undergo uh, this uh, formation of the five-membered cyclic compound. Now let me show you the reaction of acetidine. And in place of epoxide, you can also use acetidine as a product, and you can use the same N-alkyl aniline as a substrate and just we have seen the use of cobalt complex with the tetrabutyl peroxide so the combination is very crucial but in case of azadidine the copper triplet works very well comparing to cobalt in case of epoxide cobalt works much better than copper triplet that's the reason we screen all the catalyst and here this combination works very well but you need here also tetrabutyl peroxide the molecular oxygen is not sufficient for the carry out the second step However, you will be able to form both nitrogen carbon, nitrogen carbon bond. You form two CN bonds in one part using this uh, reaction conditions. And if you use the chiral acetidine, again, you can will be able to form the enantio pure immunosolidin with a high yield. You can see here the yield also very good, the E also very good. So the mechanism part will be similar to whatever we have seen the case of uh, cobalt-based system. Now let me show you the, the reaction of propargylamine with acetidine. And just we have seen the use of N-alkyl aniline. Here in place of alkyl group, propargyl group is introduced here. This doesn't involve CH activation, it's just addition reaction. In this, what happens? The nitrogen opens up the pyridine, uh, the uh, acetidine, using copper to triplate, and the reaction condition shown here. Once you open up, and in the presence of using potassium tertiary peroxide or silver triplate, potassium carbonate, it depends upon the substituent, you can make this cuprosine and which can undergo isomerization or acidic conditions, even when you put the chloroform, it undergoes isomerization to give this tetrahydropyrazine as the product. And here advantage is that if you use chiral one, as we have seen again here, you'll be able to make this compound with high optical purities. 
This also, as you know, is a very useful compound. It's not that easy to make. In one part, you can make uh, so this compound by a three through three plus three cycle addition reaction. So when you go for the reaction pathway, and as just we have seen, or chelation of this acetidine can followed by opening or with this propagylamine can give this one to diamino derivative and depends if R is hydrogen, just it undergoes exotic cyclization to give this six membered compound which undergoes isomerization to give the product. And in case if you the R prime is aryl alkyl, then you have to add a silver triplet potassium carbonate combination. The silver triplet, as you know, it can make chelation with a carbon carbon triple bond. Activation takes place. The potassium carbonate can deprotonate, then undergoes addition reaction here, as shown here. You will be able to form this, this one. This further, you have the potassium bicarbonate. This can now react to give the product where you generate the silver one salt. So, in this way, so it depends upon R1, then you will be able to make uh, this compound, heterocellular compound with high optical purity, as you can see here. And you can make, see, if you have the, if you want to have a substituent, you have to use the combination of silver triple eight potassium carbonate. We don't have a substituent, simply um, you can carry out the reaction. You can be able to form this compound. You can use either this or potassium tertiary butoxide to get this cyclic compounds, whether piperacine or tetrahydropyrazine as the product. So now let me move to the third part of my talk, just only one reaction we are, we have um, just we need two or three minutes. So nowadays we often read the paper, most sustainable organic transformations. So a lot of effort have been made with the use of photocatalysis, electrochemical transformation to accomplish um, the formation of carbon-carbon, carbon heteroatom bonds. And let me show here the use of photocatalysis to construct this uh, fused retrocellular compound. This uh, amine, secondary amine, can be easily reacted with this aziridine. And in neat conditions, you'll be able to nucleoply opening takes place. And here, look at here, this substrate is different. Whatever we have seen so far, less nucleophilic. You need Lewis acid here. This amine is nucleophilic enough, can react with this aceridine in TM of room temperature. You can have the one to diamine. Once we have the one to diamine, in the presence of light and this organophotocatalysis, it can undergo cyclization to give this fused imidazolin as a product. This has been developed by our group. This is, if you look at the paper, more efficient comparing to the commercial available ruthenium, iridium based transformator catalyst or the dyes. It works very well for this system. In this way, you can try to react with both enantiomers of this, and you will be able to get the fused heterocellular compounds with high optical purity and the high yield you can see here. The reaction is quite efficient. When you go for the reaction pathway, as I just mentioned, this amine is nucleophilic enough. You take this and this neat, and you'll be able to get this one to diamine. Once we have one to diamine, so the photocatalyst, the presence of white LED, and undergoes a reaction with this substrate. The single electron transfer process takes place, oxidizes the substrate to cation radical intermediate, where the catalyst is reduced here. You have the anion radical, this one. This can now react with the oxygen present in the system and do, do where you regenerate the catalyst and you form this superoxy radical. This radical now can, this can react here and you will be able to form the imenium ion and you form the hydroperoxide anion. This can deprotonate this proton now it can undergo addition here and in this way you'll be able to form this fused retrocellular compound where you generate hydrogen peroxide as a product this has been confirmed by titration using the standard procedure so in this way you can see here but again as you know this is 
reaction is limited. It can work only some kind of substrates. However, if you see the reaction is always the use of transfer metal catalysis, quite sustainable comparing the uh, transfer metal based catalyst systems. In summary, we have I have shown some of our uh, results on the CH functionization using transfer metal catalyst using directing group. And particularly, we have seen the functionization of indole uh, in the benzenoid part C7, C4 position. And the reaction, as you can see here, all are effective and mild reaction conditions with broad substrate scope, scalable. The products are useful intermediate to make variety of indole based compounds. As you know, indole is a very important molecule, it presents several natural products and biological active compounds. Then we have seen the use of the CH function strategy coupling with this nucleophilic ring opening. In this way, if we have the strained, uh, strained ring systems and we will be able to do cycloaddition reactions, you will be able to form a variety of five and six membered heterocyclic uh, compounds. Uh, if you use the chiral one and you can control the selectivity in this way, we will be able to generate the product with high optical purity. In other words, we can call this reaction stereospecific. At the end, also I have shown an example where we can also some uh, reactions, we can use the organophotocatalysis and in this way, we will be able to make the CH functionization more sustainable. And so this sum of our recent results. As this just I present to you, all have been done by the students. They work very hard. And uh, Tariq, he has done the C2 amidation. He did PhD in Aligarh Muslim University. He was NBDF and he presently faculty member. And he has made so many uh, articles. And uh, so his uh, English is very good. And then Pinaki, and he did the C7 oxalation, uh, acyl oxalation and uh, arylation. He is doing postdoc in uh, Reagan, Japan. And uh, this is uh, Saurav. And he did the C4 allylation, alkylation, and alkylation. He is doing postdoc with the Subok Chang and in Korea. And he is doing MS student. He is doing postdoc uh, in uh, PhD in uh, cultivation of science. And Sadis, he did the epoxidation, uh, opening of epoxide using cobalt based systems. He is doing postdoc in Canada. And uh, he is uh, just uh, Tanumai Sarkar. I have not shown his work. And he is uh, just submitted thesis. And uh, he, um, Vijay Gitantas, and he, is, um, he uh, studied, as you know, the reaction of donor ac the acididine opening with uh, N alkaline aniline and uh, propargilamine. And he also submitted thesis. He got already job. He also got already job. I told him go to abroad. They don't want to go, sir. I have got job, government job in West Bengal. Why I should go? Anyway, I told them go to. So he is uh, both submitted thesis. Then they got job. Both uh, he is in Hyderabad and uh, he is in ba Calcutta. And uh, this is uh, Thaluk there. I have not shown his chemistry. And he also recently published Chemcom. Uh, another article is. Uh, Invited review article written in Chemcom, and he also got job. It's a problem. Many of them uh, so leave. The in between, he left. Uh, actually, after two years and part times uh, came and uh, completed his PhD. And I don't know what will happen. He also got permanent job, and Assam from Assam government, and um, he has completed only two chapters. And um, so he will come. I hope uh, maybe when he gets time, he will complete. And uh, he's a very bright boy. And um, so Vivek Kumar is from Madurai Kamaraj University. And he published so many papers and is very bright. He only developed the Argonopota catalyst. And now he also has contributed Chemical Society Review from uh, his postdoc place and uh, Tuplin from Ireland. He's a very bright student. And um, he, I have not shown his chemistry. And uh, Subhas is Rai, he also got job. And he basically postdoc, both are postdoc. He did PhD in Madurai Kamaraj University, was the NPDF here, and very bright, very hardworking student. He is doing very good in his postdoc also. 
and uh, this boys was his right did phd with uh, pradeep ukan gawat university he was in pdf with me and he is also got job and uh, he has published one chemcom one chemcom review article and sanvidya banerji is okay and uh, she is uh, doing phd and uh, this boy from uh, he is from uh, i think i uh, maybe iit palakkad and he was here a oh, nice uh, boneshwar i don't remember because so many student come and go nowadays forget so he is doing postdoc now uh, phd now abroad he is msc student so they come summer now uh, many student is to come because a lab uh, there is no space nowadays minimized otherwise many student come from uh, nice uh, other places he came here and stayed here and uh, this boy um, i have not shown his his chemistry is completely different rahu he went to the post talk and uh, so he returned back and uh, this also she is doing phd in canada he is also summer student i think she also came from nicer she was here sometime or uh, iit bhuneshwar i don't remember sometime she was here two months now he went to abroad for post talk and phd and manmath i have shown one example he is uh, uh, did the hydrozone with the cyclopropane he is doing the, his uh, phd they are uh, third year phd students uh, third year or fourth year and this remaining all are completed i this is a little bit old photograph i don't have the um, photograph new students and otherwise uh, so at present i have 14 phd students two postdocs and we are fortunate throughout my program almost now uh, 20 years i've been um well supported by scrb uh, csir so far and we were able to run the lab very smoothly and with this i would like to thank you all for your kind attention if you have any questions and please uh, thank you uh, professor nimoti so for your wonderful lecture describing newer methods for developing heterocycle so uh, we also have a guest here in my home so professor hela oh good <laughs> morning hello ma'am hello ma'am how are you i am fine very nice lecture you know? i mean thank i you, have you a long time it's very nice lecture i had some questions yes yes ma'am i am not in a mood to ask right now yeah yeah please ma'am but anyway you are coming uh, next month yeah next month then but yes. do i need separate invitation or same will do no 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 as no. madam just i will send uh, what will you do Based i will the... stay i will stay in the campus okay mm -hmm. or maybe madam and uh, both way we if situation uh, uh, improves we will there or uh, vip room already be booked for you and uh, if little bit situation uh, i am a uh, little bit stronger then uh, maybe you can stay the other place Otherwise, it might get postponed also. But I really enjoyed. <laughs> I really enjoyed your lecture. Thank you, madam. Uh, so uh, I will. Uh, we will connect to you uh, so for the you know, travel sir, details. Yes, these all cupric triplet and all like uh, you know you is it the incense cyclo propyl push pull cyclo propyl ketones you are getting very high E's. Usually, I mean, uh, it's difficult. but i enjoyed your lecture thank Very you nice. madam thank you madam thank you. Uh, yeah so now uh, the lecture is open for questions and discussions so i request uh, the audiences to ask few questions uh, maybe i can ask one question thank you sir very nice presentation uh, only one question like initially in the initial slides you mentioned about uh, Ruthenium catalyst and uh, the oxidation state changing from plus two to zero, and then this is what you have mentioned. Yeah, yeah. So um, is it um, or is there any way like plus two to plus four, and then coming back to plus two? So there are palladium-based systems are known. I don't know about much, but this uh, the ruthenium we use ruthenium two. and uh, we uh, yes see this there are uh, you know high well and low well so many things are going on 
palladium 2 to palladium 4 is known but here what we from the whatever we have the uh, control experiments i have not shown to you and uh, looks it goes via first uh, this reversible if you look at uh, i have should have shown the this one reversible one and the cac activation takes place you form the metallocycle and then um, in this case, particularly, then we use oxidant if you look at there, and uh, that oxidizes, I mean, silver, uh, so it oxidizes uh, ruthenium 0 to ruthenium 2. That what it looks like. Yes, sir. One, one more question related to this. Like you mentioned about cobalt manganese um, thing, that base system. So, there, there you mentioned uh, oxygen will be used to oxidize, uh, I think, manganese. So, so is it a part of the reaction itself, or the acting, or the activation of the catalyst is being done separately? No, no. The, there, uh, the part of the reaction. If you look at uh, this uh, Jacobson, Kutchik, all the things. Even when I was doing postdoc, and I was not able to isolate a manganese uh, to saline. When you, how do you make manganese uh, three saline? We take manganese to state saline a ligand. When you make it automatically that whatever uh, you do the air is present in the uh, reaction medium and it oxidizes manganese 2 to manganese 3 although we st start with manganese 2 state always at the end we get the manganese 3 saline complex if you yes. so that uh, of course further react with uh, what is that uh, iodine benzene or uh, whatever they use sodium hypochlorite then they get manganese 5 oxo complex it may be happening here because see that uh, when we don't have the manganese two and uh, this one the reaction doesn't work very reaction works very less yield and we when we use the combination but manganese does two things here if you look at the literature and the formation of aryl radical is known using manganese three with uh, boronic acid and what we believe that and uh, maybe the this goes via uh, cobalt 3 so cobalt 2 is oxidized to cobalt 3 and the cobalt 3 maybe further can react to cobalt 4 this is a little bit problematic because here we are not able to isolate anything but uh, uh, so having all the things what we believe then uh, literature all the things and uh, here high valent cobalt the cobalt 2 is oxidized to cobalt 3 then it makes the whatever uh, makes chelation see if you look at the nowadays a lot of high valent based ch activations coming out right cyclo bendadienyl this uh, japanese group developed here also may be happening like this here only the cobalt source is different so cobalt 2 whatever commercially available that cobalt 2 uh, is oxidized to cobalt 3 like uh, the cyclopendadienyl cobalt uh, carbonyl complex like that mm -hmm. so the cobalt 3 may be then make chelation and uh, the high valent uh, cobalt then activation takes place then that may react with uh, this what uh, based on the literature and our experiments believe that uh, it happens where manganese helps manganese acetate uh, i mean uh, oxidized manganese 3 that it reduce it uh, itself reduced by where the cobalt 2 is oxidized to cobalt 3. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hello. Yeah. Uh, hello. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, it was very nice uh, presentation and very different area of reaction we enjoyed actually today. Uh, I don't have any questions, but out of curiosity, I have small query actually. Uh, in your first part, you showed that uh, CH actuation of reduced compact indole. In that, uh, I have queried that, I'm curious that uh, in the reduced form, is there any way to selectively activate that SP3CH? Uh, the indolin, indolin? Yeah, yeah, yes. We want to, we want to uh, selectively activate, activate that uh, SP3CH at alpha position. Instead of SP2, C, C2 position, right? Yeah. So, 
because it is less reactive compared to C seven C H bond. Yeah, but is there any way to in, in presence of uh, uh, SP two C H bond? No, see, see, there are a lot of uh, things. There are C H activation is different. C H functionalization is different. See. And uh, for example, our uh, well known the electrophilic uh, aromatic electrophilic substitution is also CH functionalization. Okay. And uh, sim see that uh, activation, I do not know, but uh, functionalization can be done. Okay, in, in, in presence of SP2, CH. yes, 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 we, ourselves we have done, we have done, I have not shown here. That is well known, you can uh, see now the uh, there are a lot of studies are there, it can be done. Okay, and another curiosity in that I mentioned functionalization, not activation. Okay, okay. Uh, and in a C7 amidation by acyl azide, that uh, I could not see the success scope, but I think you showed that carbazoles. And in that, how is the radio selectivity? Yeah, but yeah, that... uh, there's a good one. So we get mixed up compounds. Okay. Carbazole, carbazole when you have, and mono as well as uh, dye, both uh, we get. Because you use uh, two pyrimidyl directing group, both side uh, undergoes reaction. Yeah, but uh, depending on some uh, electronic donate, electron donating or withdrawing group. On yes, yes, ring, yes. Is it yeah, possible always, to? Uh, always there is some effect. Okay, okay. okay. And, okay. Uh, but not much uh, difference. But uh, in some cases, if you have the bulkier substituent, you get the mono substituted one. But it depends upon the you know substrate. Okay. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yeah, if I think there is no more questions, I think we can. Uh... Uh, thank uh, Mr. Punya Murthy, sir. So, for his wonderful lecture for this uh, Acharya Prafula Chandra Ray lecture series. And, sir, thank you for accepting our invitation and delivering your lecture. It was nice uh, listening to you. It was a great pleasure. Uh, thank you all for giving me the opportunity. I also is very happy to see Madam. <laughs> so, I was, some intuition was there. But I was very happy to see her and thank you all. Huh? Thank you and we will meet. So I can leave now? Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay.